out of bullets. Come on. Third day without food or water. I'm gonna tell one and all that Comanche Todd was the bravest man I ever hung. You cover. I'll trail. All
need to save water any longer. Just enough to keep you alive. Just enough to get you back to that rope. <laughs> Heard of a hanging up by Cheyenne. Took nearly half an hour for the fella to die. Just choking to death. You're gonna break that record. Too proud to beg, huh? Sheriff Harper from Oak Creek. Got me a killer here I'm taking back. Sheriff, I'm William Norman. Late Colonel Union Army. We're headed for Tucson. You know where you're at? Canyon de la Muerte, isn't it? Apache Canyon of Death. How come they let you take this route with no military escort? Fork was short-handed due to the Apache raids up north. All my men are veterans. At what? Fighting. Apaches? Well, no. We're from beyond the Mississippi. Well, then you can use an extra gun. At least until you get to Oak Creek. He'll be safe in your custody, I suppose. Just that we've got women and children with us. He'll be safe. The first time he don't look safe, he'll get dead. Sheriff from Oak Creek, Mrs. Clinton, with a murderer he's bringing to justice. Clint, form a crescent and tie up at that far pine. Yes, sir. He really a killer? Going to hang him? Why don't we do it here tonight? Not out of a thousand dollar reward from the territory. Can we camp here, brother? Yes, sis. This is our place. Keep that gun handy. He's killed more people and you got freckles. I got no freckles. And I don't care what he's done. He's a human being and you're treating him like an animal. The young woman's right, Sheriff. Secure your prisoner, but stop the brutality. Now look here, you Christers. This here's oh. Comanche Todd. He killed three of my brothers, ambushed them, like the Comanches he come from. Don't be fooled by the color of his eyes and his skin. He may be white, but inside he's all Comanche. Lived with him 20 years of his own choosing. 
And I say any Indian loving white who chooses Comanches against his own kind is no good. No rotten good. So don't nobody get soft, Belly. They're sorry for him. He's what they scrape off the bottom of the barrel. A ninja loving murderer. It's still a human being. Come on, Betty, let's feed him water the team. Hey, folks. Hello, Sheriff. Mrs. Clinton will fill you a couple of mugs and plates. If you'd like, the sergeant here can guard your prisoner while he eats. He don't eat. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for continuing to guide us through this hostile land. We thank thee for the comfort that thou hast given to those in need of thy grace. We ask that thou guide us our goodness and kindness and love for each other and for our fellow man. With each day, teach us to live with open hearts and to share with our fellow man thy bounties, thy infinite goodness, each according to his needs. Amen. Something to wash it down? What was that? The sheriff. I ain't warning you folks again. I meant what I said. He don't eat. I'll kill the first man that tries to feed him. I aim to deliver him just alive. No more. Put that rifle down, Sheriff. How come? We've taken all we can from you, Sheriff. We're Christian people. We like to think we're civilized. We'd be neither if we left a fellow man to thirst and starve. Unlash him. I don't buffalo easy. Neither do I. Untie him. You got no right to do this. You may handcuff one of his hands to the wheel. That way, your prisoner will be safe and he'll still manage to eat. Now, if someone will bring this man a plate of food. Yes, sir. Will you give me your word to behave in a reasonable manner? And you, don't you ever raise your gun against any of our people again. Not even against youngsters a third your size. She's washing his face. It would be her who'd throw herself at him. Imagine so man hungry as to throw yourself even at an Indian loving murder. She's just being kind. She's an outsider. She doesn't have to care what people think. Just look at her. Wouldn't surprise me she even went to him in the night. And the rest of us are sleeping. She's got no shame. You're the shameless one. What do you mean by that? You act so clean and, and think so dirty. Ah, dirty? Yes. Like when you say Indian lover and make it sound so filthy. That's exactly the way I want it to sound. It is something filthy. 
It was something filthy when my father took your mother as his woman. I suppose you think that was clean. A white man and a Navajo squaw sneaking off up some dark wash in the night like a pair of animals. And look what came of it. You. Oh, don't think an education and a white name make up for where you came from. You think I want you for even a half-sister? Well, I don't. You think I'm not ashamed of my father and what he did? Well, I am. I'm sick to my stomach ashamed. You have every right to be ashamed of yourself. You know I met Jolie's mother before I knew yours, and I loved her most dearly. Most dearly? Did you ever tell that to my mother? Is that why she died? Did you finally confess to her you had once fallen in love with a filthy Indian and had a baby by her? Get into the wagon and stay there. I can't even ask you to forgive her. She has reason to be hurt. She's ashamed of me before the others. Is there anything else I can get you? No, this is fine. Are they truly going to hang you, Mr. Todd? Looks that way. Well, aren't you scared? Not yet. Oh, I'd be. Bet it'll hurt. Yeah, reckon so. Say, uh, what's the name of your sis? Jenny. We're going to Tucson now. Some fella there wants to marry Jenny. What you want to marry him for? He said he'd see I was brung up. Well, I got to help with the chores now, Mr. Todd. All right. I'll see you later. Sure. I'm glad you like her, too. See his nose wriggling? Bet he hasn't had a good smoke in a long time. Why don't you give him a puff? Think I want him slobbering on my pipe stem? Your pipe, it's your paws. What's the matter? You scared of a little old murderer? Give it to me. Smoke? Thanks. Guess it must taste pretty good. I don't smoke myself. Yeah, it sure does. Tastes real good. No ass gonna get killed? Don't see it does no harm. Tough plow boy, eh? Just looking for trouble. No, sir, I ain't looking for trouble. But I don't see it does no harm in giving him a puff. You don't, eh? He's hurting Ben. Leave him alone! Comanches are about the best battle axe throwers there are. Mr. Todd's not a Comanche. He was trying to outplay. Let's go see if he killed him dead. No, stay here. You violated a trust. And I feel responsible because I believed you could act like a reasonable man. Seemed reasonable to me. I had a right to kill him. And then I don't suppose my side of the story interests you none, does it? 
No. You can save it for the authorities when we get back to civilization. And if you try to escape, we're prepared to shoot you. You understand? Seems reasonable. I'd rung you something. Oh, thanks, son. <sighs> Oatmeal cookies with raisins, nuts, and cinnamon. Sis calls them hermits. Good. Mr. Todd? Hmm? Did you really kill all those fellas like the sheriff said? Yep. Well, could I ask you something? Sure. Do you think you'll go to heaven? Why do you ask? Well, I was sort of figuring on going there myself someday. And I thought it'd be kind of nice if you were up there, too. We could go scouting and things like that. What is it? Somebody's moving to the Colonel's wagon. I'll look. to do what we said? My father's mad at me. He's in his tent over there. He catches us, he kill us. How will he know we'll be back before dawn? It'll be fun, come on. Sure, then you'll go around boasting the old camp where we did. I never went moonlight swimming alone with a boy my whole life. Nobody will know if we start now, we'll be back before moon dawn. It'll be dark, come on. I won't tell anybody. Where would we undress? Down there. Think we do it on horseback? Come on. It'll be our last swim in a hundred miles. I sat on my horse. I won't say I will, and I won't say I won't. Never mind. I'd rather take Jolie anyway. Then go right ahead. you know that? I heard. Well, as long as she won't, I will. Rich. I'm ready. We can't ride three on a horse. I've only got one saddle. Well? Let him ride with you. I'll, I'll ride bareback on Bill. I'm coming, too. Shh. This is for grown-ups. Beat it. Who says you're grown-ups? I will the tar out of you. You're not quiet. None of us will swim. You can ride with me. Put your arms around me. You bet. I guess I should have started a mess when I give you that puff on that pipe. Don't fluster yourself, son. You didn't have no part of it. Anytime I had a hatchet and Bull Harper was handy, what happened was as sure as moss growing on the north side of trees. Have either of you seen my brother? Gone swimming. He what? Went swimming with that show off your boy and the two sisters. Back to the last fording place, he said. The little devil. Yes, I've got a lot of devil in him. Real fine boy. Colonel, here's this. He'll be raving mad. Let's not make a fuss. We'll bring him back ourselves. Nobody need know. I'm on guard. You run along. Any cause for alarm, I'll holler. Seems kind of wrong having a, a prisoner stand guard. I'm sure his eyes and ears are as sharp as anyone's. All right, I'll go get the handgun. Thank you, Mr. Todd. You sure smell good. Last 
last one in's an old mule's tail. Where's your swimsuit? I'm going in raw. You dare not take a switch to our bare bottom. This naughty boy didn't even bring a swimsuit. Neither did I. Beat it downstream. Woohoo! Stay clear of the falls and no peeking. Did I hear you correctly? You mean you didn't even bring the swimming costume? That's right. Oh, that must be. And she hasn't either? Ooh, it's cold, but it feels so good. You planned this just to humiliate me. Planned what? She hasn't got a single solitary thing on. How do you know? It's too dark to see. She's a savage. Sure, that makes two of us. I think it's just shocking and, and sinful. And, and too dark to make any difference. on us, huh? Where's Billy hiding? I suppose you're going to tell. Why should I? I? I wish you'd ask me, too. Where's Billy? Don't worry. I shoot him downstream where he couldn't peek. Those falls this morning. Didn't you know the kid could get swept over him? Sure, but I. Stop this! Billy didn't drown, and it'll be daylight before you get back. If you don't hurry, and they'll they'll find you're gone. Dawn's almost breaking. Aren't you gonna lick me? I'm too glad to have you back.
wagon where Mr. Todd was tied. It's gone. Ready? Yeah. Any, Mr. Todd? Uh, not much. Caught between these rocks. That's what saved me. Uh, anybody left alive up there? Just us that went swimming. It's real terrible. Uh, Are you hurt? No, I don't think so. How'd you get down here? Rope. How can I help you? Well, can you move the wagon bed that's pinning this wheel down? I'll see. If I do that, the whole thing will go down. Take you with it. Well, let's try it. Go ahead, show. Can I get on the wheel? Yeah, sure. Go on. Found somebody. <coughs> Can't budge it. What'll I do? Uh, you got a safe place to roost there? Sure, there's a wide ledge. All right, then tie the rope around the rim. Have them hoist me up. Wheel and all. Throw the rope back for Billy, will you? All right, Mr. Todd. Yeah, I guess so. How can we get you loose of that wheel? Well, let's see. Maybe if you loop the rope through the spokes, your sis could give him a yank, bust him loose, huh? All right. Sis, we're going to tear him loose. Yes, I left him on guard. 
Maybe you'd better first tell us why I didn't warn our folks. I did. But before they was full awake, the Apaches swarmed them. Nobody had a chance. How was it they killed our people and left you alive? They didn't think they did. I'll tell you why. Because they weren't Apaches, they were his own Comanches. And he didn't warn anybody. That's why he's alive. If they was Comanches, you think my own people had shoved me over that cliff? You've got no right to be living when all our people are dead. You've got no right to be alive. Stop it, Melinda. Oh, stop it, sure. You're on his side. You're nothing but an Indian yourself. You haven't got any feelings. You haven't even cried. You don't care if our father's dead. Martha. That gal's kind of quick sprung, ain't she? Now, Jenny, if you just take the slack out of that rope. No, we don't. Say, uh, while he's nursing that rope, if you just take that gun, hold it against these spokes, you can uh, sort of blow me loose. You do, and you'll kill us all. I got nothing against you folks. Do you think he can survive with that wheel chain to his back? I don't care whether he does or not. He's nothing to us. He is to me and to Jenny. I think he is to each of you. And I think we'd all best face the truth. We're more alone now than we've ever been in our lives. If we can get Mr. Todd to lead us, maybe we'll survive. If he doesn't, we won't. Lead us? Him? We'll find our own way. We'll get our father's maps. They're burned black. All we got to do is follow this rim road west 100 miles. You do that and the Apaches will see you from 50 miles off. We can always turn back the way we came, back over the water crossing. Can you? Take a look. You got just one way out of here. Through the canyon of death. So, uh, if you just shoot me loose... We're not turning this killer loose. Stand clear. All of you. Tell her to stop or I'll kill you. I mean it. Well, Sonny, I'll tell you what I think. You might shoot a man if you were scared enough. But you ain't quite scared enough right now. Not yet. Go ahead, Jenny. Get up! Well, now, since you're in charge here, any of them water barrels still whole? Because there just ain't no water where we're going, none at all. How about food? Any left unburnt? I don't know. If you were anything but a savage, you'd know our first thoughts and duties were to our dead. Your first duties to yourself, presuming you want to live. Our first duties to our folks. We're going to bury them. I don't think you ought to. I don't care what you think. Are you suggesting we leave our people to the coyotes and the wolves? They're dead, ain't they? You're a beast. Billy. Yes? One of them horses yours? The bay. Go get him, will you? You and your brother help me, and I feel bound. These here people are going to die soon. If you want, you and Billy can start west with me. Maybe I can walk us through the canyon. We heard that was taboo to whites. That's why we'll take it. We might get through, you and me and the boy. What of the others? Fools just got to get themselves killed. They'll dig them graves. First party of Apache comes by, I'll read the signs, know somebody lived through the fight. And Apache are all mighty good trackers. They won't live long. Mr. Todd, may I go with you? All right. You show a sight more promise than these others, you can come. Mr. Todd knows Indians, and he knows the country. Can't you see he's your only chance? I don't want him along. 
I understand what you meant now about not burying our dead. But you see, well, me and my mother and sister were awful close. Well, death's a path we're all on, son. The Indians say a warrior dies well if he gives his life for his loved ones. Let's say your folks got a chance now to do that for you. I'd like to come along with you, too. Sure. All right, I'll go along, too. But let's all get this straight. I don't take orders from nobody. I keep the gun. And his bracelets stay on. Starting now, we turn into scavengers. Look for water barrels. Maybe the Apaches left more in this one. We're gonna need every drop of water we can get. And you're going to have to piece together the makings of a wagon. A keepsake. That reminds me. Look for something to kill with. Something like this. And don't mind robbing the dead. They're beyond caring. Apache back at the water, coming from all over. White Mountains, Mescaleros, a lot of tribes. Seems some whites led a sneak attack on Camp Grant. Slaughtered 110 Apache women and children. They're gathering to make the whites pay up, 10 to 1. Your folks was first blood. So for the next two days, they'll be gathering, working up the bust loose. Means we got two days and nights to travel as far and as fast as we can. No stopping for nothing. Now, if anything happens to me, you just... Now, come on, you better take a look. There she lies. Far into the west as your eyes can see, and then some. Canyon of death. The Indians say you can hear cries in the night down there that you'll hear all your life. Usually it's only the wind. Now, if anything happens to me, you just keep due west. It'll be eight or ten days to water. You live to see it. And I ain't saying any of us will. I am saying it's our only chance.
We hide out here till dark. You drive us two days and nights to get away from Apaches. Now you tell us we roost here all day. Why? Dust, five miles of it. Cross it now on every Apache for 50 miles and see our dust plumes. So start now, we hide out by day, travel by dark this way. Seems safe. Now, you've done real good. You see, you can do without no food nor sleep and only a few slurps of water, can't you? We were thinking of our folks back there. I, uh, I know it sounds kind of foolish to most whites, but uh, Indians don't suffer when somebody gets killed, not like you. You see, uh, Indians believe the brave dead go to the high ground, and that's a good place. Game's never short, winter's never too hard. Plenty of water, plenty of grass. A savage like you wouldn't know what goes on in the hearts of human beings. No, maybe not. But not long back, the three people closest to me was killed. My wife, the two boys. One about so size, the other about so. It's good I can keep thinking they went to the high ground. Maybe you could think some like an Indian if you'd try. I hate Indians. It was very kind of you to say what you did. Well, I just figured it eased a high sprung one, if you could think that way. It does me. I think Indians is better off believing the way they do. All right, gather around now. I know you all need rest, but before you do, we got the chores. We're finding food. We're doing it by daylight in these woods. I'll find some plants my people use for food. Good. There, you see, give me an Indian every time. I suppose your people know about little plants with secret buckets of water hanging on them, too. Pigweed's got plenty of water in it. Pigweeds. I'd rather starve than eat stuff like that. I just don't happen to have an Indian stomach. Now, listen. I ain't aiming to finish up a skeleton along this trail. Anybody makes me too much trouble, I'll stick a knife in him and leave him along the way. So start walking soft. And that goes for you, too. Around me, both of you, start walking soft. Real soft. Now go help your sister. Get! You boys get some bone-dry wood. If you don't find none on the ground, dig down for dead roots, non-smoking kind. Billy, you hunt us up some good tinder. All right. You better come with me. What are you going to do while the rest of us work? I'll be sitting right there in the shade. Do you mind, Sonny? How can I help? Know where the cups are? Uh-huh. Get them. Gonna put Billy in charge of the water, cup each, night and morning. Horses get twice set. Uh, here, you can scratch your names with this. Your wife. Was she a Comanche girl? Mm-hmm. Young? Fifteen when she come to me. That seems awfully young. Well, girls and ponies both, the younger you break them in, the better. Have to get wild otherwise. You've been broke in? To marriage? Mm hmm. No, not yet. Seems to me you should have been broke in some time back. Well, I guess Indian girls grow up quicker than whites. They age faster, too. Yeah, I suppose they do. Mine didn't. Didn't have a chance. Only 23 when it happened. Say, what about this fella in Tucson? 
Billy tell you about him? Said you was aiming to get spliced to him, is that so? Well, he's been wanting me to for a long time. He'd see that Billy was raised right. Billy ought to be raised out in the open. Towns are no good. What name will I put on your cup? Comanche, Todd, take your pick. Haven't you ever had a real first name? <laughs> I ain't heard it called since I was a boy. I was baptized Jonathan. My own pa baptized me. He was one of them uh, circuit riding preachers, you know. Took me with him every place he went. He even learned my ABCs riding behind his saddle. Yeah, guess he lived just for me. And to carry the word of his God to the whole West. His God? Not yours? Nope, not after my pa got hurt awful bad when it was off alone. I was only eight. Pa died in my arms and I was alone. I never left him for three days, just waited, prayed for him to live again. Then these Comanches come along. The chief took me for his son. And that's how I become a Comanche. Oh, that feels good. Mighty, mighty good. Well, now. Look what we got here, Jenny, my girl, huh? Stick with a fork on it sometimes. You can twist it. Then uh, yank them on. Suppose it's a snake hole. Uh -uh. It's badger. Maybe rabbit that's took it over. He's in there too. Let's see what we got here. Rabbit. We eat good tonight. How can you tell what he is? It's rabbit fur. See. Think you can catch him? Sure. What do I do? I'll show you. Make yourself a noose like this. And you just lay here, see? Now, the minute he comes out, puts his feet in the thing, yank. You got us a rabbit. Where will you be? All right, close just up, gang. You're rigging a few snares. Try to spot some steam meat. Now, you don't you go under and off. You'll wait here for me. come ahead of the warriors to make good medicine for the war trail. Means it's still up there. Come on, bring your desert jerky. Stand still! Don't run! <laughs> 
and pump the poison through your veins. Start a turning. Go get a stick. <laughs> Billy, hurry up with that stick before the poison gets to her heart. Where was it? Sure will die if she don't quiet down. Picks a time when we ought to be hiding out quiet. Instead, we're holding a mass meeting right out here in the open. Head for cover, quick. It was our own gun. We got six bullets, and that idiot uses up three on a stinking rattler you could kill with a stick. I found him, and I shot him. Real proud, ain't you? If you wanted to tell the whole Apache nation where we was, you couldn't pick no better way. You don't have to worry. Been up and down those washes, didn't even see a sign of an Apache. Come! Unless you fear one Comanche! You asking them to come down? You lost your mind. See, we have no guns, they've no They've already rifles. seen what we ain't got. Thanks to you, they've seen the girls. Oh! Here they come. They'll see that we can defend ourselves. Why'd you ask them? Been on the Indian side right along. You girls get back to the wagon. Billy, you too. Rich, hand that pistol to Clint. Quick! You've seen what the Apaches did to your mother and your sis. If this don't work, don't let it happen to the girls. What doesn't work? Taking on two now rather than 200 later. It's taken two Apache to kill one Comanche.
Get them horses under cover. We gotta move out of here. Strip the wagon. Before dark? Sunset. Quick as we can. Huh? How's the one with poison in her? Terribly fevered. Could she die? Of course she could. Pumping venom into her heart that way. Look, whatever happens, don't you ever run if a rattler strikes you. Oh, I won't. Honest. What did you do first? Sit right down and wait for you. Bad fever, huh? She's gonna have some powerful chills, too, for love. She might die, you know. Do you care? Yes. I didn't think I would, but I do. Thank you for what you did. Thanks for everything, Mr. Todd. <laughs> The end of the trail. Hide the wagon. Any chance there might be soldiers instead of Apaches? We've come a long way. I'll find out. Hide the wagon just in case. Ha! Jolie. I'll watch you for a while. Drink lots of water, Valinda. It'll help. Mr. Dodd said we were almost at the end of it. We are. Everybody shared, but Mr. Todd and your sister have done more than that. They've gone without water since you were struck by the snake. Why? I thought they hated me most. They thought you needed it more than they did. Billy's name on it. He wants to help, too. You know, <laughs> Billy's grown quite a lot on this journey. Maybe you have, too, Belinda. <laughs> started out on this trip, I promised nothing. Now it looks like even promising that was too much. We can't either turn back nor go ahead. And we got three bullets against 300 Apaches. It ain't hardly enough. Are you saying it's an Apache camp? Yep, big one, coming from all over. Just to attack us? No, no, they wouldn't need to gather no war party that size to take us. If they knew we was here, we'd be dead. Come dawn and the scouts head out, we probably will be. So all we can do is stay hid. I don't think there's any Apache out there at all. If I said so, they're there. They're soldiers. 
The colonel said after five days we'd be meeting soldiers. It's been more than five days. Well, if they was soldiers, why do you figure I'd keep it from you? To save your neck from getting stretched. What? What Ridge means is we know the troops must be out looking for you. Be only natural you didn't want them to catch up with you. We don't understand that. You don't think I'd lie about it, do you? No, I don't. Me neither, nor I. How's the sick one? She's been asking for you. How do you feel? You heard what you said out there. I've been worse to you than anybody, on purpose. Well. I've had it since the first day, but I hated you. Key to these. Had it all the time. <laughs> that took a powerful lot of hate, sister. Billy Goat, you do the honors, will you? Ah. Oh. Ah. You know, Billy, if my sons had lived, I like to think they'd have been like you. Don't you never forget to be proud. Where are you going? Up on top of that rise. If I see any Apaches, I'll let out a yell. That means to take the last chance, ride the horses west, hard as you can. Well, what about you, Mr. Todd? Well, like Ridge says, I got nothing to escape to except a rope. Save them bullets, son. It's me, Jenny. You shouldn't have come up here. Is that where they'll come from? Yep. What you were saying back there sounded like goodbye. Billy loves you. He's a pretty big boy to cry himself to sleep, but tonight he did. He's a lot more man than boy. A coyote. Real one, not an Apache. How do you know? Well, after 20 years of your life depending on knowing, you either know or you're dead. Suppose Mr. Williams already given us up dead. Is that the uh, fellow from Tucson? He has a fine place of business there. He, he mailed me pictures of it when he sent for us to come. I, I suppose he'd be fixing a house for you and Billy to live in, wouldn't he? Of course. Some people usually.
Why have the drums stopped? I don't know. Fire's still burning bright. Well, one good thing, we could hear them better should they start off. I wish they'd kept up with the drums. They're still there. Me, uh, I, uh, I, I never could stand being in a house. Walls creaking, uh, windows squeaking, things rattling all night long. It ain't natural. But folks have to have houses, a, a roof over their heads. Sky can be a roof. Like now. But in winter... You ever been in a wiki up? Made of willow. Smells real sweet. Easy to build, too, any place, wherever you want to be. Come spring or summer, you can up and move on if you have a mind to. That's not permanent, though. Permanent as you'd want. For years, months, or just a night. Three days from here, we could take our choice. The bend of the Powder River, quiet valley, or a high place. There's a thousand waterfalls on the powder, all making music. Please. Long about now, the grass will be turning, making a singing in the wind. You know, it must be lovely, but... I've seen wiki ups 20 feet across, with wind bells in the doorway to catch the night breeze. It's just not practical. Boy, I'd see his first big bump lower. All the little calves had. Having a real home. Homes wherever we'd be. We'd make it real. It's not what I planned. Man, she's kissed like this. They don't. said it right out. But you don't really think there will be any tomorrows for us, do you? You were talking of what we might have had, weren't you? I'm not going back to the wagon. If it's to be our last night, I, I want to spend it here with you. Discover what kind of roof the stars might have made. You're not afraid. Not from the beginning. While you was asleep, them Apaches busted camp real quiet, went around that butte. Then I seen why. What do you see? Soldiers. Only a handful, no more than six or eight, against the two, three hundred Apaches waiting on them around that butte. Can you warn them? Yep. 
That'll draw them to you. Soldiers! Don't nobody tell him where he is! They're coming down now. And Jenny's with him. They'll hang, Mr. Todd. Ain't you kind of young to be running around loose? We're the daughters of Colonel William Norman. Our train was massacred. We're all that's left. Did a renegade murderer named Comanche Todd happen to run across your path back there? This is my father, Mr. Putnam. You Mrs. Putnam? Are you the one that signaled us? Yeah. It's a good engine trick you signaling us that way. Indians taught it to me. And they'll be teaching you something, too, if you don't get this party to your main body. A few hundred Apaches waiting on you. Where? Around the South Butte. There ain't no main body, Mr. Putnam. We've been scouting ahead for an ammunition and supply wagon escort about a mile back. Only got eight more like us. Just two wagons. Eight more? Maybe we're better off without you. Think you can stay on a horse? I'll help you. All right, get the horses. Let's start moving, fast and light. We'll have to leave the wagon. Where'd you pick up them engine ponies? Back a ways. Are they Comanche or Apache? Never find Comanches this far west. You ought to know that, Sergeant. Thanks. Six months. How about you? 20 years. I bow to experience. What do you advise? Well, Apaches ain't any show-offs in battle. They'd like you to head for them woods around that butte. They don't like fighting in the open unless they have to. But we won't fight them their way. We'll fight them our way. Fight? 16 against 300? Don't you think we'd better make a run for it, Mr. Putnam? Run? Which way? Circle wagons! Better walk forward! Yo!
filtering down into the trees now. Exposed to their fire when we start the escape. Yeah, the Apache's going to be too busy running to care. Hope it goes right. You're savvy of Indians. You ought to be in uniform. Or maybe hanged. I didn't figure you for a farmer from the first. You're Comanche Todd. What you aiming to do about it? If we get out of this alive, I'll have to take you in. Seems reasonable. If we get out. You better get your people mounted. All right, men, fall back. Pass the word. Mount up. I'll take care of things here. Sorry, I saw that star. Me too. Please rise. Whether I like it or not, I am at present a law in this hostile country. My name is Howard. I've been known as Bible reading Howard. But don't hold that against me. It's just that I rely on the good book for guidance. <laughs> Since you're here accused of killing four men, it is apparent you do not. Four brothers, Harpers, all of them. Did you or did you not kill these men? I killed them. Cold blood? What's that mean? If a man kills another man in hot anger, perhaps even temporary insanity, 
hot blood, that is. The law calls it second degree murder or even manslaughter. But if a man plans to kill and cold bloodedly sets out to do it, that's murder in the first degree. Punishable by hanging. It was the second way with me. Cold blooded murder? That's right, I guess. I wanted to kill him, and I did. How many men you killed? You mean on the battlefield? Any place. How many? Why do you ask? Man hangs me. I want to know if he knows the meaning of hanging. There's a difference between war and murder. A great difference. Tell me the difference. In war, you kill the enemies of your people. Well, that's what I did. It wasn't them people you killed in the Civil War, your people? My people. The Confederates? They was Americans, wasn't they? And they're Americans now. And they're your friends. Now it's over, ain't they? Well, of course. Then you killed your friends. You see, with my people, it's different. We only kill our enemies. Your people? The Comanches. But you're a white man. I was. Until the day the Harpers come to my lodge and each of them took my wife and then killed her. And when my boys went to help their mother, the Harpers killed them, too. Smashed their faces into pulp with their heels. That's what they was doing when I heard the screaming from the river run back. Too late. But I wasn't too late to see them Harper faces. Even while they was pumping me full of lead, I was seeing their faces. And even as they left me for dead, I was seeing their faces. And when I was, when I was burying my wife and my boys, I was seeing their faces. Then the anger in me was hot-blooded, General, like you said. But as I tracked them west, it got cold, real cold. And that's the way it was when I killed them, cold-blooded. And I was glad I killed them. You want to hang me for that, General, you go right ahead, because I'd do it all over again. And I'd be glad. No matter how deeply provoked, no man has the right to take the law in his own hands. It's the Comanche law to avenge your people. But you're a white man. You are bound by the white man's law. There was no white man's law for hundreds of miles. And even if there was, you show me a white man jury in this land that had hanged four white men for killing an Indian squad and two Comanche boys. I would. The color of the skin of the victims makes no difference to me. Murder is murder. And law is law, Comanche or white, if it's just. General, General, you, 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 you say you'd have condemned them Harpers for killing my wife and my boys, right? In due course of law. Then didn't I just do what you'd have deputized me to do? I didn't have to wear no star to do it. I wouldn't have deputized you to murder them. All right, to hang them, then. No difference. In that Bible there, ain't it justice that counts? Everywhere on earth, people's, people's got laws that's maybe different from their neighbors, but justice don't change nowhere. Even in places where they give medals for killing Indians, like out here. Medals like that one you're wearing. I have no need to tolerate abuse from you, Comanche Todd. You're in no position to challenge my motives. I've always done what I believe right. Oh, and so is he. All I've heard here is talk of killing, of the taking of lives. I've heard no one say anything about giving lives. You say he took four lives. Well, isn't there anything in that Bible about giving six lives back and more? Like these others who might be dead if it weren't for him. When he could have saved himself, he saved us. When he could have gone and I urged him to go, he chose to stay and see us through to safety. Maybe this is a different kind of an eye for an eye. The giving of lives instead of the taking of lives. But I know any one of us is willing now to give our lives for him. He did more for me than save my life. He made me grow up. He gave me something I, I couldn't have lived without. Pride in myself. We want him to live, sir. I was moved by what you said about the giving of lives. 
Do you love this man? Of course. Yes, son. So do I. <laughs> the hearing will come to order. By the authority vested in me by the President of the United States, I am ready to pass judgment on this man, Comanche Todd. You've spoken well for the Indian, and through your subsequent actions have helped your fellow whites. And as an alternate to hanging this man, would you both agree to take him into custody for as long as you both shall live? Oh, yes, I do. Me too. <laughs> 